Right guys, welcome to this video on the structure of a long bone. A long bone is any skeletal bone, essentially that is longer than it is wide. Um, and these are the bones that are commonly found in the appendicular skeleton. And they're the sorts of bones that are useful in the appendicular skeleton because they're useful as levers for movement. So let's dissect one and have a little look inside. So here on this diagram, we're going to start off by talking about the zones or the regions of a long bone. And we're going to break this long bone into three main regions. The first of which is the diaphysis. The diaphysis. Now, the diaphysis is, um, is the main part of the midsection of a long bone, sometimes referred to as the shaft. And we'll, we'll talk about what's contained in it in just a moment. But that central part... Uh, the, the long straight part in the middle is the diaphysis. Then at either end, we've got what are known as the epiphyses. So a, the singular is epiphysis, but there's one at either end, so we call them in the plural, they are epiphyses. So we've got the diaphysis in the middle and then the epiphyses. And the, the epiphyses are particularly features of long bones. You don't find epiphyses in most other uh, types of bones, uh, mainly in long bones. And you'll find epiphyses in all the bones of the arm, for example, the humerus, the radius, the ulna, and all the bones of the leg, the femur, the tibia, and the fibula. They all have epiphyses. And there are some others as well, such as the metatarsals and the phalanges as well. Now, in between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, at either end of a long bone, is a section that is known as the metaphysis. Metaphysis. And so the metaphysis is essentially that neck part of the bone between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, where the diaphysis begins to widen uh, before, before it forms the epiphysis. And the metaphysis is that section of the bone, that, that region of the bone, where particularly in youth, where the majority of bone growth occurs. Now let's uh, do some more labels on this bone. So the first thing to note is that on the ends of the long bones, at the, at the outside or the ends of the epiphyses, we have cartilage. We have articular cartilage. It's called articular cartilage because it's the cartilage which allows the bone to articulate or form a joint with another bone. So where bones make joints, uh, where the long bones make joints, we have this cartilage. Um, and the purpose of the cartilage, of course, is to reduce the friction between um, bones that contact one another or that come, potentially come into contact one another and act as a kind of shock absorber. And so you can watch the video on joints to get a bit more of a, uh, uh, an understanding of how the articular cartilage works, sometimes referred to as hyaline cartilage. Then the outer layer of the long bone, the outer layer of the long bone is known as the peri osteum the periosteum peri meaning outside uh, osteum meaning related to the bone so the outside of the bone is this membrane um, that covers the surface of the bone that's predominantly made of collagen now collagen is a fiber that you'll find a lot in the body and we'll find it here again surrounding the outside of a long bone so it contains nerve fibers um, that indicate that when the bone is damaged, it indicates via pain to the central nervous system that the bone has actually been damaged. And also it contains uh, multiple blood vessels um, and the branches of those blood vessels um, from the periosteum penetrate into the bone um, to supply the bone uh, with the needed uh, nutrients and, um, and whatever else is required. Um, for for good bone health so that makes its way into the bone via the periosteum now inside the periosteum this outer layer the next layer as we move towards the center of a long bone is compact bone compact bone and this forms the outer hard shell of most bones in the body and certainly in most long bones it's it's very prevalent because it provides a great deal of rigidity uh, solidity and strength to the bone. So these long bones that, that take a great deal of weight and support the body weight um, have to have, have been made up of a, a decent amount of compact bone. And that compact bone is made solid by 
um, by virtue of having various different minerals, particularly uh, phosphorus and calcium, of course, um, embedded within that compact bone to make it nice and dense and solid. Now, moving further towards the center of the bone, we actually have a cavity in the center of the bone, which is known as the medullary cavity. And a cavity is essentially just a space um, similar to the word a cave, an empty space um, within the center of the bone. It's not actually empty, but it's a, it's a cavity that's filled with something that I'll talk to you about in just a second. But the medullary cavity runs the length of the diaphysis runs the length of the diaphysis. As you can see on the diagram there, pretty much from one end to the other end of the diaphysis, we've got this cavity known as the medullary cavity. Now that cavity is filled with yellow marrow. Well, yellow marrow is one of the two types of bone marrow. We have red marrow and we have yellow marrow in the body. Um, red marrow is the marrow where um, hematopoiesis occurs. That's the uh, production of red blood cells. Yellow marrow, on the other hand, is a, is a particularly useful storage of fat and fats. And it's actually the fats that are contained within the yellow marrow that give it that yellowy colour. And so the yellow marrow fills the medullary cavity in most long bones. Now, interestingly, uh, up until about the age of six, seven, eight years old, um, most of the marrow in, in the in the medullary cavity most of the marrow is actually red and that's because when we're very young and we're still growing we need to produce lots and lots of red blood cells and over time um, we become more efficient in producing those red blood cells and we we limit the number of sites where we need that red marrow um, and that tends to get limited to a handful of bones such as in the pelvis and in the sternum but also a little bit of red marrow uh, is still contained in the epiphyses of long bones. So you can see on the diagram, we know where, an where the epiphyses are. Those are the ends of the bones, those regions at the end. There is still some red marrow there that's, that continues to produce red blood cells. But the majority of the marrow that fills the medull medullary cavity is yellow marrow, where fat is stored. Now, yellow marrow replaces red marrow um, in adults. Once we get past about age seven or eight, and as we go through puberty, once we're adults, um, the red marrow is confined elsewhere in the body and the vast majority of the marrow that's found in the medullary cavities becomes yellow marrow. So what about the kind of bone that we're talking about in the metaphysis uh, and in the epiphysis? What kind of bone? Um, bone is that well that is known as spongy bone so it's slightly different in in structure to the compact bone which is much more solid as we've mentioned the spongy bone is a lot more porous and it's sometimes called cancellous bone and even sometimes trabecular bone it's a very porous type of bone and it is not only does it contain a lot of red marrow as i've just mentioned but also it's highly vascularized which means there are a lot of blood vessels running in and through the spongy cancellous bone. So this spongy bone is typically located at the ends of the long bones. And obviously because of the, because of the spaces in the bone, it's much less weighty than compact bone. So it's not as heavy as compact bone, but it still has pretty significant structural strength. So it's still able to withstand quite a lot of structural um, pressure and impact. Moving on, uh, we've got um, blood supply. So in long bones, every long bone has a pretty significant blood supply. Um, and often what you'll find is that the spaces um, between the cancellous bones that we just talked about are filled with marrow and blood vessels. And this is supplied to the bone by multiple supply channels. There are lots of supply channels into the bone um, and through the bone and then out of the bone. Um, so several different veins um, in, in the majority of long bones, there are several veins um, that take the blood away from the bone again to be moved back to the, uh, through the cardiorespiratory system to pick up more oxygen and nutrients and so on as it, as it moves around the system. So each long bone has a particularly good blood supply uh, through multiple channels 
that flow in and through through the periosteum and then uh, along in um, parallel to the diaphysis the direction of the diaphysis um, parallel to the to the long axis of the bone into the bone um, to supply the nutrients minerals and oxygen that's needed finally then we've got what's known as the epiphyseal plate the epiphyseal plate now the epiphyseal plate is sometimes simply referred to as the growth plate and is essentially a layer of cartilage of hyaline cartilage in a growing bone so in early adulthood the bone stops growing but up until that point the bone grows and lengthens and the place where the majority of that growth occurs is at this growth plate at this epiphyseal plate that's its purpose so it's where the the majority of bone growth occurs as the bone as the epiphyses grow away from one another and the diaphysis gets longer so when that bone stops growing um, somewhere between about the age of 18 to 21 that cartilage that that growth plate is replaced by hardened tissue and the epiphyseal plate becomes what's known as the epiphyseal line so from being an active growth plate it becomes a line which you can see on the diagram between those segments of spongy bone uh, in the metaphysis and the epiphysis we've got this epiphyseal plate that becomes an epiphyseal line well, I hope that's been helpful in getting your head around the different parts of the structure of a long bone. If you've got any further questions, add them into the description below this video. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. And I will see you in the next video. Take care for now.